Hey, TD Superiors, I'm Alejandro Perez, your sidekick, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at numbers inside of Python and Maya. So, let's start off by looking at some variables that we're going to be assigning. Okay, so here I have a multi-line comment. It's just one, but using the triple quotes lets you do that. I'm just using that to kind of separate information that we'll be looking at. Then I have a single line comment with the hashtag symbol, and it's just talking about assigning variables. Then we have two variables, x and y. x is equal to 5, and y is equal to 10. Now we're going to be talking about basic operators, and with Basic operators, they're kind of your basic math functions that you are using. So addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and things like that. So let's take a look at using them really quick. The first one is addition. So if we run this code here, we're going to get x plus y, and it's going to be 15. So let's take this, run it, and you can see that it prints out the value 15. Now we have subtraction, so if we take 5 and subtract 10, we're going to get negative 5. Now we have multiplication. If it's multiplication, if we run it, 5 times 10 is 50. Okay, next we have division. So if we take this and divide it, we are going to get a floating point variable, or not variable, but number. So we have 0.5 here. If we were to flip these and run it, we'll get two. So obviously just like division, the order matters. Same thing with the subtraction. Now we have the exponent expression. So with the exponent, we're using two asterisks to be able to go to the exponent rather than doing multiplication. So 5 to the power of 10 is this value. OK, the next operator that we're going to be looking at is the modulo. And that is basically the remainder of a division. So if we run this now here, we have a remainder of 5. If we were to flip this, so let's do y and x, we have a remainder of 0. So it just give, divides the number and whatever the remainder is, is how it calculates what the modulo is. Okay, let's move on to some built-in functions that are in Python that we can use that would be very useful to us. So, Okay, so in this first example, what we're going to do is somehow we have a string value that we need to be able to effect and use together with the 10. So we need to be able to access the 5 and we need to be able to access the 10 to do some sort of effect. For right now, we're just going to try to print the values x plus y. And if we run this, it's going to cause us an error. So let's take a look at that. So it's telling us that we are getting a type error, which is basically it's a clashing of types that it doesn't know how to resolve. And that's because we're trying to add a string to a integer value. And Python doesn't know what to do that. So how do we resolve this? We are going to use the int function. So the int function basically takes whatever the variable is and converts it into an integer. So let's try running this now. When I run this now, you can see that I get the value of 15. And that's what we should be expecting when we add 5 to 10. And that's because we converted the string value 
to an integer value that it could add together. If we have a version of this that we wanted to do, but it had a decimal point number or a floating point number, then what we can do is convert it to a float rather than an int. So let's take a look at running this. And you can see that it does give us the value of 16.5 that we are expecting if we have 5.5 .5 plus 11. If we try to convert this to a integer, you will see that it gives us an error. So obviously this is not valid. So that is something that we need to take into account for making sure that we are trying to convert into correct values. So let's try this again. And you can see that it can't convert this float value into an integer. Okay, let's take a look at rounding numbers now. And let's give ourselves a little bit more space. There we go. So we have a value here, 3.14, and we want to round it to the closest whole number. So if we run this, you can see using the round function, we can get the whole number three. If we change this to be five, you'll see that we get four. So it rounds up at five, decimal point five. But be careful with this because it's not always the case. So if we had a X value of 4.5 and we tried to run this, you'll see that it still gives us the value of four just like we did before. The reason is that five is considered to be right in the middle of being able to round up or down. So what Python does for us is if the value is five, it rounds to the closest even number. We can also use the round function to round to a decimal point number. So right now, if we wanted to round to the 10th spot, we can run this and you'll see that it changes it from 3.4 or 3.14 to 3.1. We can also go to the nearest hundredth, although we don't have any more numbers, but let's say we had uh, six. So we can take this, run it. Oh, I went to four. I want to stay two. There we go. So 3.15. Okay, so now we can take a look at importing another module that is in Python, and I'm gonna try import math. And basically this is going to take whatever your floating point number is and bring it, the function that we're actually using inside of math is, is the ceiling number or seal. And to access it, we need to call the module math and then put a dot and then the function which is seal. And then we're going to use X, which is our 3.146. So what it does for us is, and we'll just make this 3.14. It will take this decimal point number. And if it's a fractional number, like it is here, it's going to take it to the next highest whole number. So if we try to run this, you'll see that we get a value of four because the next whole number is four. We can also go to the closest lower number by using the floor. So this is lower whole number. And if we run this, we get a value of three. Okay, now let's talk about getting a absolute value for a number. So the absolute is basically the distance from zero that that number is. So if we were to get something like this, x equals five, the absolute value of x is going to be five. But if we use the 
value of x as negative 5, the absolute value of x is still going to be 5 because it has 5 units of distance away from 0. So it basically takes the number and ignores whether it's positive or negative, and it just goes in and tells you the distance from 0. So in this case, with it being 5 or negative 5, it'll be the value of 5. Now let's take a look at a basic example of using numbers inside of Maya with Maya commands. So the first thing we're going to do is import maya.cmds as mc. That gives us access to the Maya commands. Then here we're going to create some variables. We have position 1, position 2, and a middle position, which is going to be position 1 plus position 2 divided by 2. With expressions, we can use parentheses to be able to order the operations. So it uses the standard order of operations. Parentheses is going to kind of stand it up at the top of the hierarchy. So we're going to add these two numbers first, then we're going to divide the total of these two numbers by two. And what that will give us is the middle position between these two points. So we can show a little bit later that we can actually modify these two values to create a different effect. Okay, so now we're going to create three spheres. We have a start sphere, a middle sphere, and an end sphere. So if we run this code right now, it is going to create three spheres, and you can see that they are all right on top of each other. Okay, I'm going to delete them, clear it, and let's go back to our code. Okay, we have here going to set the attribute for the translate x and the translate x of the start sphere and the end sphere. That's going to give us the position for these two spheres. So let's take this, run it, and let's look at what we got right now. So we have the start sphere and the end sphere. The middle sphere still hasn't been positioned, but we will do that now. Okay, this line here adds the middle position, and let's run this. And we can see that it positions the sphere right in between both of these objects on the x-axis here. So if we were to change these values, let's say we did like three and oops, we did three and eight, and we ran this code here, you'll see that we get a different result but that middle sphere is going to always be exactly in the middle of both of these spheres. We can also use kind of decimal points. So let's say 0.5 and 20. Let's clear these first. And then let's say 20.2 and run this code. And you will see that we are still right in between. You can use whole numbers, you can use float, numbers, so integers or floats, and this code will still work. Basically, kind of the new set attribute right here, we have to get the name of the object, which is there, then the name of the attribute that we're trying to change, which in this case is translate x, and if you didn't know that, you can take that value, set it here, and you can see that we have nsphere.translate x. So that gives us an idea of how to kind of get a attribute that we want. And then we put a comma and with the value that we want to set it to. And then we get the position of that sphere changed in the translate x by using the set attribute command. And we just do that for each one of the attributes. And this one is based off of an expression that gives us from the first two objects. So we don't have to hard code this middle position. It's always going to be updated depending on what these two are. 
So in future lessons, we can do something like this, create an interface with it, let the user be able to type in numbers, and it will position it. We could also get it based off of a selection, so you can have multiple objects selected, and then get grab those to position the last object selected between all the selected objects or something like that. So there's a lot of ways to expand on this. You guys can experiment if you'd like, but that's it for this video today. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.